Welcome back to Chemchu channel. I'm Jigu Wong. Today we are going to look at the Glandan Trial Chemistry Paper 3, Year 2020. Let's start. Question 1. A student carried out an experiment to test the pH value for 50 cubic centimeter solution of nitric acid with different concentration. The pH was measured by the student using the pH meter for the nitric acid with the concentration of 0 0.04, 0 0.08, 0 0.12, 0 0.16 and 0 0.24 mol per cubic decimeter. So diagram shows the reading of pH meter in each solution. So you are given the five sets of the apparatus here with this different concentration of the nitric acid then it shows the different pH and value okay so our first question state the variables for the experiment so manipulated variable so very easy we can just write down the concentration of the nitric acid so the responding variable is the pH value so in this uh, experiment the fixed variable you can write is the uh, volume of nitric acid do not write the amount of nitric acid huh? so remember that so b step one hypothesis for the experiment so for the hypothesis remember we have to include the manipulated variable and the responding variable and then remember to include the direction so suggested answer here for score 3, the higher or lower the concentration of acid, the higher or lower the pH value. So concentration of the acid is a manipulated variable and then pH value is a responding variable. So higher or lower is a direction. So this hypothesis can score 3. So for score 2, Concentration of nitric acid is inversely proportional to the pH value. So here, if you write pro uh, directly proportional or inversely proportional, then we will get score 2 only. Or reverse MV and RV. So pH value is the RV. Then concentration of the acid is MV. So if the MV and RV is the reverse, so it will be getting score 2. How about score 1? The concentration of nit nitric acid affect the pH value. So effect is no direction. No, no direction. So you get score 1. C. Based on the diagram, record the pH meter reading to one decimal place in the table 1. So you have to correct it to the one decimal place. So here I include the diagrams for you. So if 2.38, if we round to one decimal place, will be 2.4. So the next one will be 1.2, uh, 0 0.82 will be 0 0.8, 0 0.57, so 0 0.6 and 0 0.4 for the last uh, concentration, 0 0.24 more per cubic decimeter. So next. Plot the graph of pH against the concentration of nitric acid. Okay, so the for the graph, uh, the one mentioned first, okay, pH value will be Y. Then against okay, against the concentration of the nitric acid. So this one will be X. Oh, so remember that. Don't no need to consider whether it is uh manipulated variable or the responding variable huh? so pH against the concentration of nitric acid okay so based on the value you get from the table just now so you can plot all the graph all the points okay so this is the suggest answer so you have to uh, in your uh, graph you have to put a suitable scale Okay, the scale must be consistent. Next one, the 
y axis and the x axis uh, are labeled and then put with the unit okay ph value no need to put in any unit uh, because ph no unit but the concentration of nitric acid you have to put in the unit more per cubic decimeter then all the points are transferred correctly so one two three four five so five uh, points are, co are transferred correctly then correct and smooth curve so this if you can uh, fulfill all the criteria here you get score 3 okay next question so by plotting the graph uh, by using the graph plotted predict the pH value for the nitrate acid with the concentration of 0 0.20 mole per cubic decimeter so for this question you have to use your graph uh, based on the graph plotted okay so 0 0.20 mole per cubic decimeter the pH value is 0 0.5 so in actual fact the range for the score 3 will be between 0 0.45 to 0 0.55 for score 2 is 0 0.4 until 0 0.44 and if you write less than 0 0.6 you'll get score 1 Okay, now question 2. A group of students carry out an experiment to determine the end point of titration between the 25 cubic centimeter of sodium hydroxide solution, 0 0.1 mole per cubic decimeter, and the nitric acid using the phenethylene as the indicator. So you can see the initial burette reading here, then final burette reading to get the um, change of the phenethylene from pink to colorless okay so based on the observation uh, for the changes in color of the phenethylene during the titration so what is the observation so initially is a pink color so it turns to colorless okay pink to colorless so for score 3 for score 2 it just mentioned the colorless Score 1, you mentioned the color change. Oh. Then, what is the inference can be made on the answer in your A1? So, is you can write, hydrogen ions is neutralized by the hydrogen ions. Or you can write, neutralization occur. So, give the operational definition for the end point of the uh, for this experiment, so operational definition, remember you need to include two things, what you do and what you observe. Okay, so based on the two criteria mentioned here, okay, you have to know what you do when the acid is added to alkali. So what do you observe? The pink color turns to colorless. So this is the operational definition. <coughs> Score 2, acid is added to alkali, this is what you do. Or you mention only pink color turns to colorless. So normally, the observed part, you can uh, refer to the observation questions. What is the observation? So you can copy from there. Okay, for score 1, you can mention color change. Oh. Okay, so record the initial burette reading, final burette reading, and the volume of nitric acid used. Uh, the acid user uh, in the table 2 so final burette reading okay here okay so initial burette reading and final burette reading this is initial so initial is this is 1 so this is 2 okay so final is this is 26 27 so it will be 26.90 remember there are two decimal places for the burette reading Okay, next one will be uh, initial burette reading, so it will be 2 to so 2.00 cubic centimeter. So the volume of the acid use is final minus the initial burette reading, so you get 24.90 cubic centimeter. So later on, you need to use the volume of the acid used to neutralize the alkali here will be 24. 
nine zero later on will be becomes the VA la. okay volume of acid use okay so based on the data from the table to calculate the concentration of the nitric acid that is used to neutralize the sodium hydroxide okay so for this one you have to write down the chemical equation first because we need to determine the mole ratio between the acid and the alkali so uh, based on the equation here the number of mole for the sodium hydroxide the alkali will be um, one more acid is also one more so the ratio is one one so based on the equation here we can put in the information using the formula MAVA over MBVB equals to A over B okay A is we stand it for the acid now for the acid then B we stand it for the best uh, or alkali okay so here the one more and one more here actually is the number of more A and B here so this one B is for alkali so this one is B la. this one is A huh? so we replace in the information from the question just now okay then we calculate the concentration of nitric acid so A for nitric uh, A for acid so A so meaning that you have to find out the MA concentration of N MA okay 24.9 just now I mentioned to you is 24.90 and then uh, concentration of the alkali here will be 0 0.1 then volume of the alkali use is 25 so A and B is 1 1 so based on the uh, information we get here we can find out the MA actually is 0 0.10 more per cubic decimeter huh? so meaning that the concentration of the acid needed to neutralize the sodium hydroxide is 0 0.1 more per cubic decimeter okay so next one is classification question so classify the following acids to the strong and weak acid so remember we have to normally we need to uh, put them into the category eh? so strong acid here we have only one nitric acid then weak acid we have ethanoic acid ascorbic acid and phosphoric acid okay so don't don't write your answer in the sentence eh? okay so it will be uh, rejected next question the conversation below is about an experiment to determine the arrangement of metals for in the reactivity series eh? so there are four conversation here okay the arrangement of the metals in the reactivity series is obtained by observing how vigorous they react with oxygen so right the more reactive a matter is to, uh, towards uh, oxygen the more vigorously it burns in oxygen so how to produce oxygen in the lab so when potassium magnet 7 is heated it decomposes to oxygen am i right so yes correct i have three elements of x y z that is placed between the magnesium and the copper in the reactivity series let's run an experiment okay so remember so x y z that is placed between the magnesium and copper in the reactivity series eh? so meaning that later on you have to choose the metals x y z is between the magnesium and the copper Based on the conversation above, plan an experiment to investigate the reactivity of the name of uh, X, Y, Z with oxygen. So, class, based on this uh, information here, so you are planning now, you should focus to this, uh, this M uh, to investigate the reactivity of the name of the xyz with oxygen so your planning should include the following aspects uh. so and this one is a fix uh. problem segment variables hypothesis material apparatus procedure and tabulation of data so all together will be 17 marks uh. so a until uh, procedure 
will be 3 marks each then this one will be 2 marks so total will be 17 marks okay so we look into one by one so problem segment uh, before that okay i show you one um, simple video on the how to do this experiment actually so this is the uh, setup of apparatus huh? okay so this is a so if we hit it strongly so we see we observe the color produced during the reaction with the oxygen so from there we can determine the uh, reactivity of the metals when they react with oxygen so each metals listed here they have the different uh, observation on the flame produced So from there we can rearrange them in the reactivity series, okay? But our purpose now is not arrange uh, the metals in the reactivity series. Uh. Our purpose is to investigate the reactivity of the uh, metal X, Y, Z with the oxygen only. Huh? So no need to arrange it in the reactivity series. So problem segment, so how to determine the reactivity of the metals based on the reaction of the metal X, Y, Z with the oxygen. So this one can become our problem statement. So variables, we have manipulated variable, we, have, we can write type of metals or we can put in metal X, Y and Z. Or you can put in the name of the metal X, Y, Z also can. So responding variable, we can write the intensity of the flame, okay? Then fixed variable, we can choose mass of the metal or mass of the potassium manganate 7, no? okay? Now hypothesis, we can refer to the uh, variables, manipulated variable and then the responding variable. So the higher position of the metals in the reactivity series the brighter the flame produced when react with oxygen. Okay. Mm. So M, uh, our MV will be metals. Okay, the metals are uh, different types of metals. Uh, the RV will be the flame. Uh, the flame. Okay, when react with the oxygen. Okay, the brighter and then the higher position will be the direction. No? Okay, so the material and apparatus here. Okay, so just now I, I cropped the video just now. So we can see what are the materials and apparatus we need. Okay, so potassium magnet 7. So this is the black color one. Okay, it's for the source of the oxygen. No? Then we can choose three... Uh, metal X, Y, Z, okay, but the metals must be between cup, uh, magnesium and copper. So, meaning that copper should not be included and magnesium also cannot be included. So, meaning that you can choose uh, zinc, iron powder, and then lead powder. You can also choose the uh, uh, iron powder, okay, you can choose the aluminium powder as well. And the glass U actually we put it here. This is the position of the glass U to avoid or to prevent the potassium manganese seven uh, to uh, touch the metal. Okay. Mm. Then uh, asbestos pepper. Okay, actually is here. This is the asbestos pepper. Actually, it is used to put the metal here, metal powder. Okay, mm. then for the apparatus, okay, we need the combustion tube. Okay, cannot be tested lah, huh? because you need to be able to withstand high temperature. Okay, Bunsen burner. Okay, then red hot stand with clamp. Red hot stand, huh? 
then with clamp must mention with clamp because we need to clamp the combustion tube then we need the spatula to take the uh, the metal powder and then the potassium magnate sevens are solid as well okay so actually you can draw the diagrams but diagrams no marks huh? no marks for the diagrams but you can uh, have more uh, is clearer idea how to include all the material and then practice okay so next procedure so procedure three marks so you have to uh, mention or list out the procedure uh, clearly uh, as detailed as you can so two spatula of potassium magnet 7 powder are placed into a combustion tube so place normally will you focus to the uh, action word uh, action words like place okay then the glass wood is placed inside the combustion tube uh, okay mm. and next a spatula of zinc powder is placed on the asbestos paper and then put inside the combustion tube. In place and then put. Then combustion tube is clamped horizontally to a retort stand. Okay. Then zinc powder is heated strongly for a few minutes. Then the potassium magnesium 7 is heated strongly to produce a oxygen gas the metal powder needs to be heated uh, first uh. otherwise if you heat the uh, potassium magnet 7 first you will release a lot of oxygen gas then if the metal powder is still in a very cold position or condition uh, it won't react with the oxygen so the oxygen gas is wasted so next the observation is recorded then the experiment is repeated with iron powder and then the lead powder huh? so step 6 and step 7 eh? so actually these two steps are compulsory for all the experiment so no matter which experiment you are doing normally we need to record the observation and then repeat the experiment with another MV <coughs> okay so Finally, is the tabulation of data. So tabulation of data, remember, must be put into a table. So in your table, must include the manipulated variable and then the responding variable. So responding variable, normally we can just put in observation. Okay. Mm. So here, suggest the answer. So table, MV will be type of metal. So zinc, iron, and lead. So responding, we just put in the observation. So just uh, for the observation, just leave it empty because you are going to plan the experiment. Okay. So uh, I think that's all for uh, the Clandon Trail Papers 3, year 2020. Thanks for watching.